Hi friends. My light is waning, so I'm gonna try to do this real quick for you. Today I'm gonna show you how to make a paper ball uh, for your birds. So this is, um, these are examples. I strung them on some thin twine. This would probably the be, be um, best for a smaller bird, like a parakeet or um, a smaller conure or a smaller Quaker. These I did put uh, some paper like um, shredded paper in two, and I'll show you how to do that. You can also stick little treats in there if your birds like uh, to get them interested in foraging, you know, a sunflower seed, half a piece of an almond or a sliver of an almond, a safflower seed, something like that to keep their interest. And then just string them along. I put beads in between here, but you could do a whole bunch of different things. And once you know how to do it, it's not terribly difficult, but the process is kind of hard to explain without doing it visually. So here we go. We're going to need two pieces of paper. I used, um, used Astro Bright paper that I got uh, from the big box store. The reason why is it's acid free and it's lignin free. So those are the th qualities you want to look for uh, when you're finding paper to use for bird toys. And they come in really bright colors, which is fun for me to work with. I have already cut two uh, pieces out. They are one inch wide, and it's the length of the paper. And then in the center of them, I have another cut. And you can see that it doesn't go all the way to the top. It goes almost all the way to the top, but this is how we're going to secure it and start uh, the weaving process. So um, I have four pieces, essentially four legs, I call them, that we're going to use to work with. The first thing to do is I am going to keep this piece, my green piece, kind of on this side, and I'm going to start weaving in my pink piece. It doesn't totally matter how you start it it's more about how you keep going so my first leg here that I'm gonna call it a leg um, and I'm even gonna I'm gonna number it this one is gonna be number one this is my number one side this is gonna be my number two and then down here I'm gonna call this one number three and number four. You don't have to do that, but I'm gonna use numbers just to try to make sure that we um, have some kind of um, visual cue that I can use instead of the one on the left or the one on the right, depending on how you're viewing this. So I'm gonna take one. It's gonna go, and I have this other piece going this way. One is going to go over the top of four, or this first leg. You probably won't be able to see that, sorry. And under three. And then number two, your two leg is going to do the opposite. So it's going to go under four and over three. So you can kind of see how it's coming together. This is very reminiscent of uh, if you ever made uh, placemats out of paper. I think I did that in school at some point. Um, it's the same theory. So then we're just going to pull them so, till they get to the edges. I'm going to pull it so that this is snug against the pink and the green is snug up against the end of the cut in the, in the, uh, the green paper and in the pink paper. We still have our numbers one, two, three, four. The next thing we need to do is kind of get rid of these two parts. So I'm, it doesn't matter which one you do first. I'm just going to fold them over the side so it's kind of tucked into the back there. Again, I'm trying to work with my light. We'll see how it goes. All right, so now those are just folded back. This is what it looks on the, like on the opposite side. It's not real pretty, but it doesn't need to be. The last thing before we start our weaving is, uh, is to fold this little corner back. 
it just makes it so that later on as we're making our ball we don't have to deal with this sticky out corner piece that is a technical term so there we go with that now the first thing that we're going to do is take our leg number one and put it over goodness leg number one goes over leg number two it's easier to hold it sort of in the air like this because it's going to start wrapping around into a ball one goes over two then over here with your other hand you're going to do four going under three here's what it looks like kind of and you just kind of have to start making it work for yourself it takes a little time to practice and even still I sometimes end up with kind of a mess but you you can I'll show you how to kind of work it together in the end and your birds aren't going to care it's going to be fun for them to rip up all right so then we have we're going to start the process of weaving these together so our number four piece here is going to go over number one and under number two. And our number three piece is already starting to move a little bit in the right direction. It does the opposite. It goes under one and then over two. Will you have to do gymnastics with your fingers? Yes, maybe. Or you can call me and I'll try to make some for you. Don't call me. You can send me an email if you know my email. Okay, uh, so then we can just kind of tighten things up. So here's the top of our, of our thing, but as we've started to weave it together in this way, it's going to start to curl around. Once you've done this first step, um, you're, gonna, you're gonna notice a couple of things. First of all, our numbers are exactly backwards. Now we have four, three, two, one. Also, it's starting to look like a ball. And you'll see that you have kind of an opening here. You can choose at this point to put some paper in there or a treat or something. Um, you can always do it later. But if you have it and you want to stick it in there, I find I gotta keep hold of all of these pieces and so I'm just gonna grab some of this paper shred. Uh, I only put a little bit in because otherwise you'll have a hard time working all the way around it. And again, later at the end, if you've forgotten to do that part and you just wanna stuff some in with the end of a chopstick or a pencil or something, that's also an option. Okay, so now we're back here. We, again, we have four, three, two, one. We're going backwards, so we're going to do the same thing. This side, four, is going over three. This side, one, is going under two. Then one is continuing on. Over four, under three. Two, this leg is going under four and over three. So at the end of each kind of weaving thing, when we pull it a little tighter, our pink legs are going to be together and our green legs. I'm sorry, I'm making this up and it's probably more complicated than it needs to be, but this is how I think of it in my own head. Now we're going to just kind of pull it a little tighter. You don't have to pull it super tight and it doesn't have to be perfect. But what I try to do is make sure that I still have about the same that these two pieces are about the same length and that these two legs are about the same length as well. Okay, so now look, we're back to one, two, three, three, four. Okay, and we're gonna have to do it again. So, holding these together, one goes over two, four goes under three, four goes over one, under two, three goes over one and under two, sorry. Three goes under one and over two. You'll know this 
because you will correct yourself when you see that it doesn't look right like I just did. All right, and then I'm going to just keep pulling these pieces just real gently. Remember, it's paper. And I think the key is to just kind of follow the, follow the pattern of the paper. I think I had to do this like, I don't know, 10 times before I got like a similar, something that looks similar to an actual ball. So if you really want to do these, don't give up. Just keep practicing. Maybe you'll get it on the first try and be so much cooler than me, which probably isn't hard. Okay, here we are again. We got our four, three, two, and one. Say it together. Four goes over three. One goes under two. One goes over four, under three. Two goes over under four over three and we are pulling i try to keep my hands or my fingers on at least one color all the time then it doesn't tend to start falling out but uh if you have to put it down if i have to if i'm interrupted while i'm making one i usually have to start over but that's just because i get lost Maybe you'll find a trick that will help you. So anyway, I'm pulling it a little tighter. Now, I don't think I have enough paper left to keep weaving like I've been doing. These are pretty short, and going over and under all of them at the same time is probably not going to work out. So what I'm going to do instead now is just start trying to find the papers and following where they're supposed to go. And look, you can see now for sure that this leg is a lot wider than this leg and it is not even a problem so if you want to cut about an inch length of papers and about halfway about a half inch cut down the center of them and about you know put them all about together it's going to work out all right now i'm going to start following it so you can i hope you can see this i can kind of tell that this piece is supposed to follow this curve kind of and it's gonna I can tuck it under here and pull I usually try to do one and then the other this piece is the next kind of loose piece this number two so I'm gonna follow it and if I look down I pull this back just a little bit I look down I see that my piece is destined to go right there and pull it through I have to keep just tugging gently. Then I can do my, yeah, then you can do, it's, you know, dealer's choice. Now I see this one is going to follow here, follow through here, underneath that. And then maybe I go back to three. It doesn't matter. You can go to each one however you like and just keep tucking and tugging. Now, this is pretty loose. If you wanted to make it, um, tighter or smaller the ball you could go through and keep I mean sometimes I do that and I just it makes it harder for the bird which uh you know depends on how much mental stimulation or how heavy of a chewer they are um you can lose leave it looser for those who birds who are not quite so heavy chewers you can keep tightening just tug a little bit and more will come out for the heavier chewers now you can also like trim these ends off if you want to. You can leave them there. You can tear them. It doesn't matter. I just usually leave them there. But see, now you have these little holes here. So if you wanted to tuck something in there, like a, another piece of paper. Sorry, I'm leaning away. Like another piece of paper or here's like a safflower seed. Whoops. This is pretty small for a bigger bird, but you can tuck it in there. Like just tuck it through right? Or, let me see if I find, here is a chopstick. I can use a chopstick and just kind of tuck it in there so they can't see. Same thing with some of these, this crinkle paper. If I wanted to add another piece, I'd just kind of touch it there and then poke down. Whoops, not like that. Poke down, maybe, with my chopstick. And if you leave some out, that's a little enticing too, you know, for your bird. When I go to string these, I usually try to either use a pretty stiff 
type of cordage to get through here or if I have stuffed them all first, a lot of times I will use um, like a hemp or a bird safe twine and put it on a needle and then it's easier because you can just put your needle through each piece, tie and so forth. The other thing you can do is just leave these as like little foot toys somewhere. I wouldn't number them for your birds. So if I was going to give this to a bird, I would take this off because I don't know if that ink is safe. It's probably not. So just keep that in mind as well.